There's been so much angst on the left over the last year about how Georgia's new voting law was going to suppress voter turnout, particularly in communities of color. The comparisons to Jim Crow were incessant, the hyperbole over the top. But now we have the first numbers coming in. And those numbers simply are not bearing out the fears of the partisan prognosticators. And yet, not only is the left-leaning media slow to concede that the panic may have been unwarranted, some are actually doubling down. Early voting began in Georgia on Monday, and the first two days of turnout have been enormous. In fact, the early numbers are way up over the last midterm elections of 2018. According to statistics from the Georgia Secretary of State's office, 291,740 people have voted thus far in the Georgia election. That number trounces the 216-18 number of 2018, the last midterm election year. And for all the talk about communities of color having access restricted, the numbers don't prove that out. The nonpartisan voting tracking website uh, Georgia Votes broke down the demographics and found more than 111,000 black voters have already cast their ballots in Georgia. It's roughly one and a half times the 73,000 plus black voters who hit the polls during the first two days of early voting in 2018. Now look, we'll see where the numbers land. It's still early. But it's important to note that there is a Senate race on the ballot in Georgia this year, and a high profile one at that. But even with this small sample size, it seems pretty clear that Georgians of all races who want to vote can vote. And that's wildly different from the impression you got watching left-leaning cable news as the Georgia voting law was enacted. The state of Georgia has just overnight passed a new law that really attacks a key tenant of American democracy. That is the right to vote for everyone equally. This isn't a partisan issue. When you suppress the vote, you're suppressing it for everyone. It has a greater impact on communities of color, new voters and younger voters. But this is not a partisan issue. Brian Kemp hastily and behind closed doors signed a law putting Georgia on an express train back to the Jim Crow era. Doesn't get much clearer who this law is designed to benefit and who it's designed to hurt. Even President Biden joined in on the alarmism. It is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. I mean, this is gigantic what they're trying to do. And it cannot be sustained. Now, look, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. I think they were fixing a problem that did not exist in Georgia. In particular, I've been concerned with a provision of the law that empowers the partisan Georgia legislature to appoint a chairperson to oversee the state's election board after they removed the Secretary of State off the election board altogether because Brad Raffensperger refused to pretend that Donald Trump won the 2020 election. I have concerns when the referee is actively playing for one of the teams. But it also doesn't necessarily make Georgia a racist outlier to introduce stricter ID requirements for absentee ballots, reduce the number of drop boxes where voters can return their ballots, and reduce hours for early voting. Now, you can say you disagree with the Georgia law. I have concerns about the Georgia law, but it's also not inconsistent with what a lot of states across the country have. Most importantly, the reduction in hours clearly is not suppressing the early votes. In a perfect world, you'd think folks who were scaring the heck out of Georgia voters would say, OK, this is great news. I guess, you know, maybe it's not that bad. But alas, the political extremes know they can never be wrong. And on MSNBC this morning, Democratic gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams doubled down. Voter suppression is a threat to our democracy, and it's real. You just saw what they did in Florida. And what's happening here in Georgia, a homeless woman in Forsyth County was challenged under Brian Kemp's new law and told that she couldn't vote and then was denied a provisional ballot. They did that on purpose because we know that... Joe Biden won by, less, by about 11,000, 12,000 votes in Georgia, 7,000 of which were cast through provisional ballots on Election Day. They know what they're doing, but they're trying to distract us with false equivalents and reductive arguments. Instead of looking at the big picture numbers, she's cherry picking one and unverifiable case to claim some sort of mass voter suppression. It was no better on CNN, where anchor Anna Cabrera also doubled down on the so-called restrictive Georgia voting law. It is the first major election in Georgia under a restrictive new voting law, but that's not stopping record numbers of people from casting their ballots early. 
a restrictive law. That's some balanced reporting right there. Look, I didn't expect that the left-leaning media were suddenly going to do a 180 here. But you'd think they would be celebrating this rather than continuing with the digs. Joining us now is Gabriel Sterling, Chief Operating Officer for the Georgia Secretary of State, a Republican who was also one of the main voices pushing back on the false claims of voter fraud in the 2020 election. Thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. So are these early numbers as strong as they seem? Well, hell, Dan, they're stronger than we ever expected to see coming into this midterm election. We're rivaling our 2020 numbers of early in-person voting. And the, the claims that the, the left keeps on making is a Jim Crow 2.0, you know, President Biden came to my state three miles from where I was sitting and said, if you support this law, you're like George Wallace and Bull Connor. I'm a native of Georgia. I'm sick and tired of people from up, up north coming down here saying, you're all a bunch of racist white folks trying to disenfranchise African-Americans. Our office, Secretary Raffensperger, defends every person's right to vote. And we are seeing excitement out there. We're seeing lots of people coming out to vote. I mean, we had another trip, uh, six digit day today. I haven't got the final numbers, but I know we went over another 120,000 today. We'll be push, pushing a half a million by tomorrow. I mean, this is, this is gigantic. And the fact that they're trying to say that there's a law that's restrictive and gets in the way of people's right to vote is simply a lie. And they have to keep telling it because they raise money and they fear monger on it. And it's really good politics for them. And they did a lawsuit and in discovery, we saw, we saw they poll tested voter suppression. And they said, this poll test, great. That was New Georgia Project with Stacey Abrams, and they're going to ride this pony until it dies. Let, no, let me say this. First and foremost, this is great news, right? It's great news for people who want people to vote. For those of us who just want the person who more people want elected to win, this is good news. So let me just say that in the most unequivocal way possible. And that I don't think enough people are saying, because you're right, everyone's got a political angle on it. It's like, well, that, you know, this side, that side. But let me ask you this, and I asked your, your boss, Brad Raffensperger, about this as well when he came on the show. You know, I do have concerns about some of the changes in the law, particularly on this issue of taking Brad Raffensperger out so he's no longer part of this board, um, putting in a partisan, presumably, who the Georgia legislature gets to select and the reason they pulled out the secretary of state is because he pushed back on the claims of voter fraud we know that that's the reason that he got pushed out of this doesn't that aspect of the law concern you it was political punishment it's frankly the dumbest part of the law but we said that from the beginning there's lots of parts of this 95 percent of this law is about simple election administration um having a, another person be the chairman doesn't functionally work real well it's a difficult thing, I, but it's a, the person they've chosen, I, it's not really as much of a partisan. This guy's a former federal judge. He hasn't given to any campaigns on either side for years. I mean, and he's playing it straight right now. And I see where some people can kind of spin this up. And they've also said that the legislature can take over elections boards. That's not really how any of this works. There's a lot of review and transparency and, you know, the hoops you have to jump through. You can go to court to fight it. I mean, it's a pretty well-constructed law. It's about election administration, and they're demonizing and raising money on it. Our job in the Secretary of State's office, Secretary Raffensperger says, we want to keep all three of our options available for people to vote. He's doing it the best way they can, plan their votes. We've been hammering plan your vote now for months to make sure that we have the highest turnout. Anybody who wants to cast a vote legally in the state can cast a vote Gabe, legally. I'm basically... But I'm out of time here, but I want to ask this question because you're a straight shooter. Um, you're, you're getting heat on the, on the left, people saying there's voter suppression. You're getting heat on the right, people saying there's going to be voter fraud. This election in Georgia is going to be done fairly, and people can have total faith in the results, correct? Absolutely. When both sides are yelling at you, you're probably doing something right. Gabe Sterling, thank you very much for coming on the show. really appreciate it. Thanks, you, Dan. Have a great night. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.